Uh, hello, this uh, will be a uh, short sort of informal overview of the uh, introduction to the radar trainer software that we use in our online course on marine radar. And uh, I'll just go over, it, it's, a, it's a big program, it has a lot of functionality, and uh, so I just want to start out and get to the basics, and as we go through the course, I uh, will be adding more videos where we get to, to more sophisticated applications. Um, for now, let me just start again. Let's see, how would I do that? Uh, repeat, maybe repeat. Okay, so here's what, there's the default scenario when you load the, uh, load the program. And we have a chart here, and later we'll look here. There's various charts we can load here, different charts, different parts of the world. And uh, this, remember that even though sometimes these look real realistic and they look like real places, um, we shouldn't consider that they're doing an, an absolute uh, mock-up of what the radar looks like on these actual places. But it's a, it's a fairly good uh, simulation. Um, and so what we have is here, this is our vessel in the middle, sometimes usually called center vessel in radar talk. So here's our vessel going up this ch channel. And here comes, this, this scenario only has one target. And here we see the radar screen and the sweep going around like that. And we have a trail turned on, so it's leaving a trail like this. Now later, see here's radar view. Later we'll actually go in and solve our problems with this with this uh, sort of larger screen over here. But uh, for now, to get used to how things work, let's just stay on this one. And <clears throat> down here, these controls at the bottom for now, and we have various ways. You can set targets. You can do things like that, and I'll, I'll come to that in a moment. But let's just look at a few things here. This is how we control the speed of our vessel. But let's look at this. This is a nice feature here called the scan, and that's just showing us what this radar sees here. And and how the land uh, how how the land shows up here. So this bump is this bump over here. Looking at that, and this is our vessel. We're in sort of head up. It's called head up mode, and so it's all uh, the top of the screen is at the head of the vessel, and it's moving that way. And if I uh, make the range bigger, like I expand the range out here. And see now we're now we're gone out to we're looking out to one and a half miles from here to the edge, from here to here on the outside is one and a half miles, and these rings in here are 0.5 miles, so that's that's zero. So we see that this headland right here is just under, you know, just under 0.5 miles away from us, and it's kind of like on our hip, on our quarter here a little bit. Uh, up here, and here's our vessel, and here's where we're seeing. This guy's getting closer here, and um, and so then, uh, or you reduce the range like that, and you see you're sweeping more like that. So this thing you can play with, and you just learn how shadows work, how you don't see around radar, doesn't see around corners. So it'll be. Um, so you see, if I go, if I expand this, uh, let's see, let me expand the range over here. So you see the radar beam is in principle reaching clear out to here, but you see it's all black here, back here, because I, the radar beam just can't go over this land. So that's uh, shadows, the shadow of this land. And it depends on low or high land, but even relatively low land, that's going to block that pretty well. Okay, so we took the scan off and come back down. We're just passing this vessel here. Now, if we want to, let's see, what do we look at here? You can move this chart around like this, uh, pan it, you know, like that if you want, or up and down, and I'll, I'll come back. And then it's going to always center on the center vessel here when you center it. Um, so let's see what else. Um, let's compare the radar with scan on. I've done that. Okay, values on the screen. So you see, let me just show you what we have on the screen. This vessel is now steering a course of 344 true. These are always true in this program, uh, true bearing, and it's a speed of five knots. So you see, if I turn left, like see, here's this headland over here, and here's my ship's heading line here. If I turn left towards this, you see, let me turn left. I'm going to turn left 10 degrees, and then 
Uh, that's 334. It didn't take. 334, 324. There, it did it. And I'm turning left. And that the effect here is if you're looking, well, here's my actual boat turning left, right? But on the radar, it just looks like this land is coming towards us this way because I've, I've turned towards it. And look at this little buoy starting to show up here. Here's a buoy, right? Oh, no, that's actually a little target out there. Little experiment. There's a little target. See that guy come? Well, we don't know that's a target on the radar yet and so forth. And notice how this trail got distorted of this when we turned. These are all things we're going to come to. But anyway, here's where you, uh, I'm going to just, just for now, I'm just going to start this one over. Down here, you've got a pause button. You can pause, go get a cup of coffee, come back and so forth when you're working on some of the problems. You also have a time factor. I'm running real time now. So you've seen the behavior here of these vessels. What's my speed? It's five knots. And then we have to see how fast this guy's going. That is number, that is a B. Or no, I don't know yet. I'll have to show you how to do that. But anyway, this is the total time the scenarios run. They always start at 12 o'clock. And then this repeat starts from the beginning. But you can speed things up. You can make it go 10 times faster, you know, if you want to just start studying things. That just... It's not life lifelike, but it, it's just speed things up. So let me just start this one over. I'm going to resume it and then repeat just for now, uh, just to just to get to that point. Okay, and so there's my there's my boat speed of the center vessel. That's my always my vessel, and that's going to always be target A. And so if I go up, there's 10 knots. Now I'm going 15 knots, like that. And, uh, and so forth. So um, that is the, uh, that's how you change the controls of this vessel. Later we'll look into maneuvering the other vessels or other targets like that. We can maneuver those as well. Or we can actually jump onto this vessel and look at his radar of everybody else. But for now, let's, let's just concentrate on this. Oh wait, I want to slow down here a little bit. Well, too much. Okay, I'll go back to five knots. All right, so now I'm going five knots again. So let's look at, uh, there, I have a video on these other tools, but let's look at the electronic bearing line. You see that popped up, EBLR. Those are relative bearings. So if I want to then take a, a bearing to this target over here, you see it's bearing 335R. 335R. That means a relative. And relative bearings means a dead ahead is 0, 90, 180, 270. So it's 335R as a relative bearing. And so that's that. Now, I, if I want, for example, these are the variable range markers. These are the range rings, 5.5, oh, let's see, no, 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 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. So this radar view right now is me in the center, and I'm looking out 0.75 miles in every direction. And... Um, and then so this variable range marker, I turned it on here, the two green has to go on, then this is expanding it out from the center, and then it goes out here. Now we have a whole video on these, these two controls, so I can, I can just make this one short. But if I shut off the range rings, then you see I've marked this, this position here, I could just mark this target right there, you know, like this. So there, I, now again, remember, we, we would be doing this in our practice problems. We would be using uh, this tool over here. And, you know, it's a little more precise, like that, than this guy. You see, like that. But I'm, I'm back over here now, chart view. All right, so that's the variable range markers. And so the ship's heading line is this. That's right up here. And often, you know, so and you can shut it off. You can hit that and shut it off. And, and almost all radars have some way to shut off the heading line. Sometimes you just hold it down to have it off, and then you let it up and it's back on. Ours, you just turn it on and off. But to, just to see if there's any targets underneath there or anything. So that is that. Uh, let's see what else. ID the vessels. Well, there is a way that you can turn on identify the vessels. Then for one sweep, it'll put letters beside the vessel. So this is, you see, identify. The center vessel is A. This is B. You, the center vessel is always A. Um, and we have, the, later I'll come back and control the other vessels. And we've done the range ring, pause and repeat. And we've moved the chart. EBL. Okay, so one last thing I'll say in this section, and then I'll end this and start something different. You have here in the help file, 
there's help topics and this uh, this explain these are help topics that talk about the various aspects of the simulator now for our students in the course let me point out there's a confusing part here that we have to work around this program actually includes this package radar trainer 3 actually includes two simulators not just one see we're only running one simulator here this is this one you could go up here to view file Radar Trainer 2A. Now this is, and see it's come up, here's the icon here. This is a totally different simulator. This is actually version 2 of our original simulator. This you're looking at the very first ever in the history of science, the first uh, PC computer simulator of marine radar. It's the very first one ever. And, um, and, the, and this one has virtues uh, that we might look into later on in the course later on in the course. But for now, we have to just forget it. Don't even use it. We don't need it for anything. This one is more sophisticated, and we're going to stick with this one. The ver version 2 does not have land. Again, it has some assets that we'll look at later in the course. But for now, its main the main role of a ver Radar Trainer 2A is it gets in our way when we're reading the sim this discussion. Because every time you do something like how to use RT23A, well, that's okay. But then right in the same book, you got RT2A. So you got in the same book, uh, the same book, you have this uh, the, the discussion of both of them. And so please just work around that and just keep in mind that there are two simulators. And we're not, in the course, we're not using this 2A at all. We're doing everything with this one till perhaps very the very end of the course. And so there's that, there's that document that you can read that you get from help. Uh, help topic. Then there's another thing called tutorial, and this is something else we have to explain to our students in the course. This tutorial is primarily made for those who are not taking our course. So we're not using very much of this tutorial here at all. We will be doing some of the practice exercises that are in here. We'll come back and do some of the practice exercises, but this tutorial also talks about how radar works, radar navigation, some philosophy, and things like that. All of that sort of content or radar science, that's all been improved in the, um, in the textbook that we use and so forth. So we don't need much out of this tutorial. There is some, you know, some more practice on the use of the simulator in here. But again, um, when it starts discussing the controls and, the, you know, things like that, I would bounce back into our textbook and not worry too much about this. Um, there are, uh, you know, some technicalities here that are explained that for later on. We don't need any of that for right now. So that's the main thing. There's two simulators. We're only using one. And don't be confused by the other. You can always just see see that when you run a ground, it's going to pop up. And see. now we're not running a ground. I think this is heading right out into right out into the uh, Puget Sound. So you're not going to run a ground. But if you turn, like if I turn and uh, like if I turn, uh, let's see. Let me just turn my boat boat heads up. I'm in a heads up radar. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Okay, so I'm headed over here. Now let me just pick the speed up to about 30 knots and take my power boat and drive it into the ground like a crazy person. Uh, 45 knots. Uh, get on a plane and, and go up there. And what will happen is, and if you walk away and you leave your, you leave your machine unattended, if you leave this thing unattended, then your vessel is probably going to run aground. And so you want to just uh, keep that in mind. Now I'm about to go aground right here. Uh, let's see, you have run aground, and the only the, you, there's no getting out of this. This is just like your boat. you got to reverse course and reset the speed to drive yourself off the beach. But, uh, or you could maybe cheat and just start all over. Let's just see... Uh, Load scenario. Yeah, you can cheat and do that. Okay, but in some of the exercises, if you go, if you make a mistake and go aground, you're going to have to back it off and you know things like that. 
So it's a pretty realistic that way. So that's a first. That's a first uh, simulator. I'm going to come back and talk about these these different modes: the head up mode, course up, north up, and then we need to look at charts. See, because here's the charts of the different areas that we have, and we want to we want to print these out because that's how you navigate. You have a chart. And then you have a radar and so forth. So we're going to come back to those in a moment. But let me stop with this one for now.